Okay, so title for today's lesson, How Did Slaves Resist? Lesson objective, to be able to understand the different ways that slaves resisted their owners. And then you've got two key words there as well. You've got the word plantation and you've got the key word resist. So please write out all of those things. Make sure you are underlining your title just as we would do if there was a normal lesson. So one of the things that I wanted to mention, as you move through, some of my narration might talk about the cover teacher and asking them to pause. When I did the narration for this video, I thought that you guys would still be in school. So that's why. So just ignore it if it's talking about a cover teacher. Just use your brains uh, and pause it where you need to pause it and complete the task as you need to complete them. There are two um, camera photo pictures uh, on here of work that you need to send me. All right, enjoy the lesson. It is a really interesting one. So I just want to do a brief recap. Uh, on auctions and plantation life. Um, so if the cover teacher, when you press the space bar three times, three questions will appear that they are the only three questions. Let the students think about their answers. And then if you press the space bar separately, three more separate times, each answer box will appear. Um, so it's just a chance for them to discuss and see if they can remember the information from last time. They'll need to look back in their books. So I just want to do a quick starter with you guys. Um, I want you to really have a little think. You're just going to make a little bullet point list in your books or on paper. Um, what sort of things do you guys do when you don't want to do work in a lesson? And obviously, we're not talking about history because you're all so engrossed in my teaching that you are always doing all of your history work. Um, but in other lessons, dull ones, uh, what sort of things is it that you guys do to uh, avoid doing work? in the lesson. So there's some pictures there that might help you, but just make a little bullet po uh, point list, uh, just a couple of minutes to do that. And then if your cover teacher can just go through some of the responses from students, add things to your list if someone says something that you think that you do, that you didn't write down. So just another little list it mini task here, guys. So I want you to take what you've just got there about the things that you guys came up with that you might do to resist working in a lesson. Um, and we're just going to apply that back to slavery. So what types of things can you think of that slaves could have done to resist slavery? Think about their day to day work and the sort of things that they did. OK, give it a little title. How could slaves resist? And then I want you to try and list down at least three things. Um, and then again, if the cover teacher could just discuss it with the students um, as a class after a couple of minutes. Guys, add things to your list. If you didn't get anything on your list, this is an opportunity. When people suggest different things, you can add them onto your list. So we've got a table here, guys, of nine of the popular different things that uh, slaves would do to resist slavery. OK, so starting at the top, we've got escape if a slave could get away. OK, and where it says underneath that, that is the consequence of escape. So if a slave managed to escape, that would cost the owner labor, which means work because there would be one less slave um, and therefore less work would be being done. All right. Second one we've got is poison. Sounds a bit extreme. OK, but uh, if you were a slave that worked in the big house and you were responsible for preparing meals for the plantation owner, OK, there was there was the option of poisoning them although it was difficult to get hold of the poison. Uh, it would cost the owner their health, most definitely, and in some cases, maybe their life. The third one you've got is working slowly. All right, so less work equals less profit for the owner. However, you'd have to bear in mind there that you are being watched when you're working, especially if you're working in the fields by the overseers. So those people that would be there often with the whips that would dish out the punishment. So the working slowly one, you had to be quite clever and do it without them being able to notice that you were working slowly. Uh, the fourth one, we've got breaking tools. All right. So that wasted a lot of time. OK, breaking tools was quite difficult. Um, and then there will be a cost to the owner to have to repair them. But again, you're being watched by the overseers. So you're going to have to attempt to break a tool without them noticing what you are doing. And you need to make it look like you haven't done it on purpose as well. Then we've got um, read, uh, learning to read and write. OK, so some slaves tried to educate themselves because education and knowledge makes slaves, makes anyone really more powerful. OK, but slaves felt that 
they would feel more powerful if they were able to read and write. Number six, we have got pretending not to understand. OK, this picture I've chosen for this might go completely over your heads if you haven't seen the film Dumb and Dumber. However, uh, I'm sure that the cover teacher there will will recognise the face. So I thought it was a good choice of picture. Um, so pretending not to understand. So slaves play dumb. OK, uh, it wasted time having to have something explained to them. And of course, the overseers and the plantation owners assumed that they were dumb anyway. So the slaves sometimes kind of played on that. Um, so making the overseers or plantation owners explain tasks to them more than once, just as a time wasting technique, whereas actually the slave knew exactly what it was they had to do, but they pretended that they didn't. Um, and that meant less work was being produced and less profit was being made for the plantation owner. Um, and then down at the bottom, we've got faking illness. All right, that wasted a lot of time, um, less work and less profit. However, depending on how ill you said that you were, it might be that the plantation owners or the overseers made you work anyway, um, unless you're sort of passed out on the floor. Um, it might be that that they would sort of make you make you do the work regardless of how unwell you were. Um, and then we've got stealing things. So uh, if you could get away with stealing things from your owner, that would cost the owner money. OK, so it was quite a small thing to do, but it, it was having an effect on the owner. It would cost them money. But again, you have to think about what would happen if you got caught stealing. Punishment for that would be pretty severe. And then our final one, you've got keeping traditions. So the slaves really tried to, when they had free time, which wasn't much, OK, they tried to keep their African identities alive. So, um, you know, singing, drumming, those sorts of things um, was really important to them to keep their morale up. All right. So as a good way to say, yes, we are in this awful situation. Um, however, look. Let's keep ourselves going. Let's remain positive. Let's keep, remember that we're from Africa and that we have all these wonderful traditions. So they're just nine of the key ways. So what I would like you to do, guys, is to copy out the text. You can make it look like it does on the slide. That's absolutely fine if that's the way you want to do it. So you can sort of do a grid or you can do it as a list in your book or you can do it as a little table. Um, however you want to do it. So just make sure that you are writing out the, for example, number one, the word escape, and then what the consequences are. It's really important that you're listing those because they're the important bits that you need to be thinking about. OK, so I want you to take your time on this. It should take about 10, maybe 12 minutes for you guys to get all of these down. Now you've um, completed your grid or however it was that you did it, you listed the nine different ways that slaves could resist. What I'd like you to do is um, at home, you would obviously need to do this on your own. But if you're in class, you can do it with the person next to you. Um, I want you to rank the nine different means of resistance um, in order of how effective you think that they would be. So for each statement, you need to put a number next to it from one to nine. OK, so number one should be what you think would work the absolute best. OK, and then number nine, um, what you think wouldn't work very well at all. And then you need to do pick a number two. So what do you think would work pretty well, but wouldn't be the best? And you need to go all the way down. So every statement should have a number next to it. It's really important that you're thinking about this, guys, and don't just pick. Well, this one might work. You need to really think about right, well, what would the consequences of this be? What would the outcome of this be if I did this one? OK, so have a really good think about it. So put the numbers one to nine next to all of your statements, please. You should have now put your numbers one to nine next to each of your statements. So what you're going to need to do now is answering in full sentences. And remember, guys, you know that that is the bit I'm most interested in, is that you are answering in a full sentence. OK, I want you to explain to me what um, why you think the statement that you put the number one by is the most effective way to resist slavery and why you think the statement that you put at number nine was the least effective way. So this is your opportunity to tell me what you know about it and what you have learnt about it. OK, so the full sentence here is really, really important. And this should take you about six or seven minutes to make sure that you're getting this down properly. 
And as always, guys, as we always finish with, we are going to do a bit of source practice. It's not the most pleasant picture in the world, okay? Um, it's an 1863 photograph of a slave named Gordon who escaped from a plantation in Louisiana, USA, to a place where slavery had been banned. The marks on his back are from punishments by whipping. OK, so what you're going to do is, as you know, answering the four questions in the yellow box in full sentences. So what type of source is it? OK. Source G is a what is it? Is it a piece of writing? Is it a painting? Is it a photograph? OK, and then you're trying to consolidate. So before we used to have separate questions for these, but I'm now trying to roll them into questions to get you thinking about writing in little paragraphs about source. When was it made? You know that it's written there above the photo and who is in it. OK, and then I just want you to work through the um, the questions. When you get to number four, I want you to think about if a photograph made in 1863, so a long time ago, um, would that be able to lie or is a photograph what a photograph is? OK. So have a think, but you need to take your mind back to 1863, not to what we might be able to do with photographs today. You need to be thinking about would we have been able to do that 100 years ago? All right. So try and get some really good answers down for me, guys. And the blue box underneath is a reminder for you OK, of the differences between primary and interpretation sources. So you should all be able to do this. And then just moving on to our final plenary, um, which I'm going to let the uh, the cover teacher leave, lead. Um, give me five ways in which slaves resisted their owners. So you guys should have your books closed for this bit. And uh, the cover teacher should be able to pick out students with their hands up who are able to uh, get the ways that um, slaves resisted their owners. In your head, try and think yourself if you can get five, if you can remember five of them. All right. Um, and all being well we have no more lessons this week so our next lesson is next thursday and i should be back in school for that which will be great so this should be your final narrated lessons